hope this is working. Everyone can hear me. Um, so for those of you who are online, up there in the ether somewhere, um, you're joining a class of eight other, pe other fellows in your classroom. And this is Energy Tech 101, Dr. Brad Layton. I am not Dr. Brad Layton. Um, he will be back, and he will start recording these lectures next Thursday, just in time for your first exam. So my name is Peter McDonough. I teach on main campus mostly. I teach an undergraduate class called Energy and Climate, which is so if you, if you mixed Energy 101, 102 into a climate change, international studies, and ethics, and then just kind of muddled it into a bowl. That's kind of what I teach. Where are you going to? Uh, I'm in that uh, climate change program. Oh, okay. Uh, so you, you probably saw it listed. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna I'm not teaching it this fall. I'm teaching it this spring. So if you guys like this energy stuff, kind of dive into some of the more humanities side of it, um, you're welcome to join my classes. But welcome to Energy 101. So technically, you guys have already heard this, but you, those of you online, each lecture will be recorded. We'll try to do them in kind of half hour blocks. So we'll we'll do something for 20, 30 minutes, take a short break, I'll open a new lecture. And that'll make it easier for them to upload everything and just kind of organize it. So for each lecture, don't just click on one video and then finish. Like it's, it's going to be three, hopefully. The Moodle site, everything you need is up there. Syllabus is online. Um, all the lectures will be uploaded to Moodle, YouTube. Um, all the notes, the textbook is actually online. Um, there's even a discussion board, so make sure you check that out. Um, yeah. Do we like pay for the <coughs> book through tuition already, or do we still need to purchase that book online? Is it just there? I'm not actually sure. Okay. Um, it's there for you online. Okay. If you want to ask for purchases. So, yeah. If you want to, um, I have a paper copy, but the online stuff is exactly the same. Okay. You, you don't have to purchase the online. No, it's just on Moodle. Oh, it's a big cool. PDF. Great. So, um, any any questions that you have, direct to Brad, because um, I don't actually know most of this stuff. If it, if it refers to the syllabus or to Moodle or anything, um, I can access it. He's going to decide what's on there. He can help you. If you want to know, um, oh come on. Computer's being really slow. There we go. Okay. So there's his email and mine. So you're welcome to email me with kind of more content questions. Something comes up after class and you're like, oh, I should check in on that. Welcome to email me. But in terms of anything else in the class, just contact Brad Direct. Um, there is a discussion board online. And there's a, he requested that everyone do an online introduction. Last I checked, one person had done it. Um, so if you just want to go online, write a paragraph about yourself, what you're interested in, why you're doing this class, that sort of thing. That'll just help everybody else. I know who you are. As far as I know, you have met. Is that true? Why that true? Yeah, that sounds good. And Brad um, also wanted me to say that feel free to add anything to the discussion. If you come across a cool article or you heard something on the news, or you just have a question about something, that's a great place to So use that as your conversation space. Um, kind of last but not least, um, this class, I mean, obviously everyone has an opinion about energy, right? One of the most contentious issues in our generation, generation. Um, so everyone's coming into this with kind of assumptions, experience, opinions, and that's great. And this is a good class for you to explore those. And this will help kind of prepare you for the industry if that's what you want to go into, or just kind of gain literacy. But also use this class as a way to sort of become fluent in the language of energy. So that if you do, since you mentioned nuclear specifically, um, you are going to go up against um, different interests that you don't agree with. And to be able to speak their language, to be able to know where they're coming from, the first step in like really getting it. If you're coming from an environmental perspective, an industry perspective, political perspective, just be able to have that conversation across sectors. This is a good class to do that. So with that, uh, 
down. Can I have everyone up? This is in the morning. If you just want to line up right here. So, just a quick exercise. I don't expect you to know the answers to this. Um, may completely fail. It's not really important. So, what I want to do is start at one end. Start with you. Most. Yeah. And I want you to identify one energy, one type of energy you observe in this classroom. And then we'll go down the line, and you're going to trace this energy as far back, step by step. So, start us off, name, name something. Like electronics, like a computer? Okay, the computer. So, you, you're talking about like the light coming out of the monitor? Yeah. Okay, so light coming out of the monitor. Light is a type of energy. So, before it was light, what was that energy? What's the previous step? Uh, electricity. Yeah, electricity. Okay. Before it was electricity in this computer, what was it? Very cool. Okay, so you're jumping all the way back. Actually, yeah. So, we had light. <laughs> And before that, it was electricity, computer. Uh, so if you jump it all the way back to coal, that's a bit of a leap. But can we, we go a little more here? So it's not like we burn coal and then there's a wire. Yeah. Okay, where does the circuit come from? Breaker. Breaker? You go to the breaker? The green box outside. Okay, put the green box outside. Transfer. Okay. into the plant. Okay, so maybe we'll call that in immediate steps. Just the power lines. Power lines. The and that's still. Transportation of the power? Yeah. It's still moving electrons, which is what's in the computer. So we're still on electricity. So before it's in the power line. Steam generator. Steam generator. There's a lot of things going on in the steam generator. What specifically? Where are those electrons coming from? Like you light a fire and you make electricity. Like steam heats up water. Okay, steam heats up steam, steam turn generator. Generator produces it. Okay, so that's the intermediate step. We have the electricity. Before it was electricity, it was a spinning turbine. All right, we're backwards there. All right, forward. Yeah, we're not going forward. <laughs> How dare you? Um, so before it was electricity in, in the wires, in the power lines, it was a spinning turbine. So it was mechanical. Energy. So call this maybe rotational. Okay. So what? We're here, right? No. What caused the turbine to spin? Pressure. Or what? Uh, steam. Yeah. steam. So what's the steam doing? The steam is. <laughs> what does steam do? Um, it's evaporated water. <laughs> it is evaporated water. Okay, so. Is it sitting there? Is it moving? Rising. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's heat rising. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the steam itself. It's the physical pressure of. Water droplets. Okay. Just under really high pressure. Okay, so pressure. Yeah. So this will call this <laughs> <laughs> pressure um, or just steam motion. Sorry, my handwriting is terrible for those of you online. Um, so we had kind of linear motion causing rotational motion. So before the steam was moving, there has to be a source. Right. So, so if I'm making a dam, you know. Okay, would you use a dam to make steam? Not steam, I guess. Okay. That's just electrical turbine pressure too though. Right, so we could we could branch off. We yeah. could, so from the turbine, you know, here's this part, you know, the light, electricity, power lines, rotational, mechanical energy. That is ubiquitous, except for solar. Um, this is how all energy is produced. Some all electricity is produced. Some. 
It's what's before that turbine that makes all the So it could be a hydroelectric. It could be water moving that turbine. It could be steam. It could be the gas. It could be wind. Right. So this is this is where the whole energy field just branches. And you have to decide what you're going to do. Nuclear. Nuclear. Uses steam. Still steam. Yeah. Here's the crazy thing. Almost everything is steam. So someone back here, when they said steam, you, you, one of you, um, you decided for everybody else that this is a steam power, this is a thermal power. So the rest of you can't talk about solar or wind or hydro. We're now right thermal. now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> geothermal. You know, geothermal. So we got yeah pressure from steam. Are we with you? Right? Yeah, I, right, I don't so. know where it goes from there. No, I don't know. What creates yeah. pressure? Well, pressure. I mean, you're a chooser. Well, pressure, I mean, you're just, you know, squishing it down per square inch or whatever. Right. But, um, I mean, I'm still thinking there has to be a source. I mean, you have to get something from somewhere just right. to even get the pressure. But what was the steam before it was steam? Water. So what caused it to go steam? Heat. 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 No. So this is going to be some kind pressure of Pressure to go, okay. Yeah. The pressure is created by, you're heating something up, it's going to expand. Yeah. And then it's going to move. So that's that's what the pressure is. You, you had it right. Um, so the heat uh, is the energy in the water. That's where the energy was before it was motion. So what created that? Big field. Geothermal or burning coal? Which one do you want to go for? Nuclear fusion. fusion? Probably not fusion. Yeah. Yeah. Fission. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, we'll just go burning coal. Burning. Something relative to our state, at least. Okay. Well. So what is? I mean, what what is the what's the energy? Why does burning it do anything? Carbon. Yeah. Carbon. Cheating. Just Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> You're out of the class. It's yeah. a very <laughs> concentrated form of carbon that burns a lot hotter. You know, just when you say wood, it wouldn't be as dense as carbon. Because carbon is, well, I mean coal because it's compacted over a long period of time. It just, it takes longer to burn, but once it starts, it's just very, very hot. Yeah. So, so you, you're, you're describing, you describe the carbon. So when we say carbon, you need to specify what you say. Carbon emissions, carbon as like a chunk. Carbon, yeah. or the carbon bonds, like the actual atoms. Compacted carbon. Yeah, so you're talking about the actual molecules. Yeah. So this is going to be coal. So this is chemical energy, or the energy within chemical bonds. So carbon atom bonds to carbon atom, there's energy in So that's, that's what we're releasing when we burn, that chemical energy. But yeah, you could have gone anywhere here. You could have said nuclear, geothermal, would it gas, fuel oil, whatever you want. Even solar. Can do this. Solar. Okay, before it was coal. Dinosaur. <laughs> Almost. It's a popular myth. Swamp. Well, it's definitely. Um, sorry. 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 <laughs> you lost me. So, what else? What else has carbon other than living, other than animals? Dead. Or, or dead. <laughs> uh, no, I've been mixed up all these years, I reckon. <laughs> well, where, where does the living, where does a uh, giraffe say, get its fuel? It's food. What's its food? Leaves. Yeah, quite matter. So, we, there's a common misconception that fossil fuels, gas, oil. Is dead dinosaurs. And you know, for a fraction, that's probably true. But the total amount of biomass that existed on the planet when our current coal was alive was quite high. Almost all. We're back before the ice age, yeah. Oh, long before. Yeah. yeah. We're think talking think millions of years. <coughs> how old it is. Right. I mean, the soil all <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, or right. You know, it's plant matter or moss. That's interesting. Or algae. Algae is a really big thing. Yeah. 
So if you think about um, oil and gas, where they are in the world, mostly in places that used to be underwater. So that's good. Winter, or sea wind covered it. Yeah. So things that were underwater got compacted. And those became oil and gas. Coal tended to be more on land, hence the mountains. Um, but yeah, it's stuff that died a long time ago, and then under a lot of pressure over time, lost all of its other impurities and became just a part. So that will happen to us. Sorry, that was morbid. I'm okay, with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're talking about plant life. Plant matter. Before it was plant matter. <laughs> well, it was plant matter. <laughs> I need the answer. <laughs> uh, for plants. Yeah. Where do plants get there? Uh, so I guess like the sun, really. Yeah. So sunlight. So this would be um, electromagnetic. Yeah, yeah. Electromagnetic. Radiation or light, okay. same thing as that. Oh, isn't that weird? Mind blowing. Why right? we do all this just to create what's right there? Right, just to create light with, no with the sun's not there. Yeah, so weird. <laughs> all right, and before it was sunlight. Ultraviolet uh, rays or um, sunlight is a mix of ultraviolet and infrared. There's a few intermediate steps we could kind of gloss over if we want, but sunlight comes from so the sun. The sun, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Just starlight, I guess. <laughs> um, what's happening in the sun to create? Like, exactly. It's just all being compressed, just a giant ball of fire, basically. Okay, yeah, on the outside for sure, that's, that's exactly what's happening. So heat, you know, combustion. That's it's part of what's going on. Um, but where does the sun get the end? Where does the sun get the heat? Why is it a giant ball of fire? Why is it a ball of fire? Yeah, what's creating that heat that it can even combust? In? What's happening in the sun? Sure, I explain. Do you want to, do you want to pass? Uh, yeah, it's it's fusion of hydrogen. So this is nuclear fusion. Something that we as humans have not been able to reproduce on any sustainable scale. Um, but fission, it's where you take an atom and you split it into several smaller pieces and you get the energy out of it. Like they would have tried to Yeah, then... CERN does a little bit something different. Um, Anti. Yeah, and that's that's still different than fusion. Fusion is where you take two hydrogen atoms, the simplest atom in the universe, and you try to mush them together into helium. So that's why the sun is a mix of hydrogen and helium. It's making helium. Hmm. I don't know. Where does it get? We're gonna keep going. Whoa. <laughs> where does it? Where does the sun get? The energy, it takes a lot of energy to do. Where does it get its energy to create a fusion reactor in the sun? <clears throat> um, I, want, I want to say, um, I want to say, like, gravity? Is that right? Yeah. Really? Okay. Be confident. Cool, yes, that's what I wanted to say, gravity. <laughs> <laughs> It's just all that pressure and all that matter compacting the core of the sun. That's a lot. That's how you create. That's why it's so hard for us to do it. You can't create that environment very easily. They've done it at Berkeley Labs and a few other places, but only on short times. Oh, no. Hope you get Where are we? Oh, pass. You pass. Oh, no. <laughs> Back to the fun stuff. Where did the sun get its. So gravity is what? Pressure. Under what? Well, it's cold out in space, so I can't say heat. It's not heat, yeah. Pressure from? Like, uh, That's tough, actually. <laughs> so, where is there no gravity? Uh, space? Where is there gravity? Now. On a planet. On a planet. What's an interesting planet in space? She's just getting tired. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mass. That's mass. So gravity is just causing.
caused by the stuff. Where there is stuff, there's gravity. Where there's no stuff, there's no gravity. So a planet has a lot of mass, so it pulls things. Yeah. Yeah. So the sun's massive. Yeah. So where did it get all of its mass? Oh, wait, we're still here? We're still here. Oh. <laughs> Not when you yeah. Where did it get it? <laughs> Jesus. I know, we're going to get down to like some really ethereal <laughs> stuff here. Yeah. Like, I, still I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So when I think about it, it would our solar system's placed right alongside so many others. You see the stars, and they must have a gravitational effect on our planet, on our solar system too. So it's a constant pushing and pulling of things. And with all the planets that are surrounding the sun, maybe it's possible different elements from planets that are surrounding the sun kind of feed into the sun a little bit, maybe giving some of their elements to the sun to get so it keeps it's it's feeding it or yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a much more violent version of that. Oh really? So when so stars the sun lose. is sucking stuff out of other planets? No. No. <laughs> I mean the sun's sort of created the planets, so yeah. but if you think about like a really big star or a black hole or something, when it dies, it explodes. Yeah, supernova. You've all seen supernovas. So that's a star just Venture blowing its you know what. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, all that stuff just kind of scatters out in space, but gravity eventually takes you. Yeah. Oh, I Not back that's how we got all the planets. We get the heavier planets with rock planets closer. We have gasier planets. Yeah. yeah. Think about a centrifuge. Yeah. Take a yeah, or uh, 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 a washing washing machine. Yeah. You know, we're with different liquids having different consistencies, and then they settle. Yeah. Yeah. Like physics. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So before gravity got its it's it was mass. 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 What has mass? But like, where did that mass come from? Is what I was thinking. So right. it came from stars. something else dying. Exploding stars. Yeah. This kind of, you know, this blind thing circle blind. Yeah, happens on a galactic right. scale. Too. Yeah. They're holding up <laughs> the sun for all the zeros to see. <laughs> yeah, when the supernova happens, you know, you get two rocks side by side. They start to pull towards each other and start to orbit each other. And you get more and more and more, more until you have stuff. Wouldn't you want to go mass and then matter because mass comes from matter? Oh, so mass is that just the physical... Sense. Quantity of mass. Yeah. So it's, it's more a measurement. We just call it mass. So mass and matter colloquially are the same. In physics, matter is a thing, mass is a matter. Right. Mm. Thanks for pointing that out. We don't need to get too deep into that yet because it's terrible. Um, so you could, you know, who knows how many supernovas happened? There could be any number of scatterings and mass flying around, or heat or mass flying around. But in the beginning, Big Bang. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, you just have to go back to the Big Bang. No, I was going to say, no matter how much you break it down, it always comes yeah. back to, we don't know 100% for sure ever. Right. <laughs> so. At some point, you're like, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it be fun to find it? It's limited. <laughs> okay. So, ignoring, you know, everything to here. So, Big Bang. We don't control gravity, we don't control nuclear fusion in the sun, we don't control combustion of the sun, we don't control. But if you think about all the steps we go to, just as humans, to produce energy for the things we want to do, we have to take sunlight, which became plant matter, which became a fossil fuel, which produces heat, which produces pressure and steam, which produces rotation of the turbine, which produces electricity, power line, which finally produces the light coming out of that monitor right there. <laughs> the difference years. Yeah. And I'm just leaving it Wow, out. this is million-year-old light. Yeah, it's That's all coming right back out. We don't appreciate that at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is aged. This is aged to a perfection. <laughs> yeah, that's a good year. It's like that. Ah, aged million BC. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so it's something, two things to keep in mind from this exercise. I know it took a while, but um, one, 
energy isn't a thing that you can make or get rid of. It, it comes from somewhere, it goes somewhere. Energy is a process. Isn't that the law of equivalent exchange, though? So you never lose it? Yeah, it's actually, um, ooh, wait, can I do this? Don't do it. How do I add a thing? Click a plus button down there. There's a plus button? There's yes. A uh -huh. <laughs> so this is called conservation. I feel like a physics teacher right now. Of energy. So you guys have heard this term before. We use it colloquially too. So you can't just make energy out of the blue. So basically what this says, this is the first law of thermodynamics. If you've ever heard of the laws of thermodynamics, this is number one. <laughs> you should know that. So, in a simple sense, it basically says you cannot create or destroy energy. And the law is more specific about that. It says, it says in a closed system you cannot create or destroy, but the universe is a closed system, as far as we know. Yeah. Can we see it? <laughs> <laughs> Those of you online, you may sit now also. <laughs> Actually, do whatever you want. You can be in your job. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is kind of fun. Like, <laughs> I don't know who these people are. I hope you're doing well, though. Um, so that's conservation of energy. So when we say, you've heard the term energy generation, like a generating plant, energy production. Yeah. It's kind of a misnomer to say generating. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good word. You're like tapping into it. Right. So when we say we're tapping into something that exists, before we ever use it, it's called primary energy. So the names of the power plants, you can <coughs> the coal power plant, the gas power plant, geothermal, nuclear, yada, yada, yada. Those power plants are named for the primary energy that they are tapping into. So each one taps into its own thing. And as long as it gets more energy out than we put in, it's a worthwhile effort. Efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. So this is... Um, Oh, well, I have a better word for it. So this is the energy content embodied. Sorry, my handwriting is terrible. So coal is a primary energy. The energy embodied in that piece of coal before we ever mess with it. Uranium is a primary energy. Sunlight, wind, a river, that's all primary. Well, like natural gas. Yep. As long as we haven't messed with it first. But the, the energy embodied in the gas is from something that we didn't create. That's what we call primary. After we've messed with it, you could call it secondary, you could call it tertiary. I would just call it useful. We can't, we, if I give you a chunk of coal, you're not going to be able to do a whole lot with it. So once we create useful electricity or something out of it, then it's... Apparatus. Yeah, some technology. Evolution. So... I'm going to stop the recording real fast. So those of you online, this is the end of the first half hour. We're going to take a short break during class. I don't know why I'm looking at the projector while I'm saying this. But um, go ahead and click on video two, and we'll keep going.